the Fellowship of the Great Physician welcomes you to House Call. Our hosts today are doctors of chiropractic, Dr. Gerald Lala and Dr. Richard Johnson, who is also a board-certified acupuncturist, practice independently in North Oaks, Minnesota. Let's join our hosts for today's program that will assist you in your quest for optimum health and well-being. Welcome to House Call. I'm Dr. Gerald Lala. It's great to have you with us in this dimension of House Call. My co-host, Dr. Uh, uh, William Jensen, is on special assignment. He's uh, not with us today, but he will be with us tomorrow. So um, uh, we get many, many emails from many, many people, and we're happy to receive your emails. Um, your letters and telephone calls are all fine. Uh, uh, it was beyond our imagination uh, what um, the Lord would do when he encouraged us to start House Call many, many years ago. But one of the letters that um, we received recently said, why don't you guys tell us what chiropractic is? We know that you're preachers and you're chiropractors and you're Christians. Uh, why don't you tell us what chiropractic is? So we thought we would do a series on what is chiropractic and try to keep it as general as possible to not uh, define any chiropractor specifically. But we're going to start with a statement that Thomas Edison made uh, quite some time ago. Um, his prediction was that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and the cause and prevention of disease. Uh, today we would consider that a rather chauvinistic statement. I'm sure if Thomas Edison was alive today, he would say his her, because there are many wonderful female chiropractic physicians. And uh, But the truth is that the doctor of the future, Thomas Edison said, and I happen to believe that, will give no medicine, but will interest in his patients in the care of the human frame and diet and the cause and prevention of disease. And why is that? Because we are seeing that drugs don't work, that when they do help, they also cause adverse reactions. If we put another organ in a human body, the person may live longer, and that's well and good. But then they've got to take drugs to stay alive. So the more the emphasis that we place, so the doctor of the future, there are going to be other doctors out there that are going to practice traditional medicine, traditional drug therapy, and as long as our government allows the drug companies to run wild in this country and overcharge for medications, we're going to have drugs. But the doctor of the future will give, will, uh, will give no medicine. I don't give medicines. Will interest his patients in the care of the human frame? Certainly I do, but I, I didn't limit myself to chiropractic just to the human frame. I saw the person as a whole person, and that was after I became a Christian, and I questioned myself, was it even biblical to be a chiropractor? And through the years of Bible study, I found out that it was biblical, that it really, Thomas Edison may have discovered chiropractic, but God created it because he gave us a spinal column, a brain, and all of these different wonderful systems by which we live. As a matter of fact, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not really our own. So when the Spirit of God is within us, and when we welcome Christ into our heart, our spirit becomes born again. And then we can walk by the Spirit, not the flesh. We can seek after the kingdom of God and His righteousness rather than seek after the kingdom of the world and our self-righteousness. So, that's the way it is. So, a definition of chiropractic from a natural perspective is a therapeutic system in which disease is regarded as a result of natural malfunction and manipulation of the spinal column and other structures is the preferred treatment method. That's how chiropractic started out. And basically, that's what chiropractors do. But some, like us, look more at the whole person than just the spine. What is the typical education? And most states require chiropractors four years pre-med, four years in chiropractic college, one year internship. Uh, many of them uh, go on and do residencies in radiology, orthopedics, um, other, other things, other specialties. And it's been, of course, an evolutionary process. It began in treating the upper cervical spine with the atlas and the axis. Then it moved down to the cervical spine, then the full spine, and then into all articulations of the human body. So how, why did chiropractic grow? That's a good question. It grew on the failures of medicine. Chiropractic wouldn't exist if medicine cured and fixed everybody. It just wouldn't. So when medicine failed, people went to the chiropractor. 
Continue to get results where medicine fails. Is that an anti-medical statement? Heavens no, my closest friends are medical doctors. They know the limits of medicine even more than I do. So drugs and surgery aren't natural. They offer the latitude and approach. So there are many different specialties, subspecialties in chiropractic. So there are many methods. Uh, many we refer to them as straight. They only do the spine. Some are mixers. They do more than the spine. And then some are whole person oriented. One of the big hype terms today is wellness. It doesn't, you know, they're advertising themselves as wellness. Well, you know, it's just another term. It doesn't, they're still going to have a certain vision for their approach to health, just like Lutherans think Lutheran, Catholics think Catholic, Baptists think Baptist, Baptist, Pentecostals think pa uh, Pentecostal. So the next slide is that the absence of symptoms does not necessarily indicate the presence of wellness. What does that mean? The chiropractor is educated to look for and correct causes. First place we would look is at the spine, then the nervous systems that the spine regulates. The spine is like the switchboard in the nervous system. It regulates the nervous systems. We're going to look at the surrounding muscle skeletal systems for it's our muscles, ligaments, and tendons that hold us in place. And then some approach like myself or Dr. Jensen, we are more diagnostic oriented. We take a science approach to health care. And we look at the individual makeup, the individual biochemical natures of people. Now, as I mentioned, there are many subspecialties in chiropractic, such as exercise physiology, science-based nutrition. There's a lot of people practicing nutrition that's not science-based. Oh, they're not doing diagnostic tests to see if you need those vitamins and minerals or the homeopathic remedies. My approach is science-based. I don't give vitamins or minerals or electrolytes or herbs and, or essential oils without some scientific test to substantiate it. And these are tests that are proven and accepted within orthodox health industry, not some um, oh, half idea, some trumped up thing that supposedly works. And another subspecialty is applied kinesiology, acupuncture, such as Dr. Jensen in our clinic is uh, certified in acupuncture. He practices both the Western and Eastern approach to acupuncture. He doesn't practice a cookie cutter. Cookie cutter is what's wrong with you, da, 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 da. put the needles in. He does a test to see if any of those meridians are malfunctioning, and then he knows where to apply those needles. They're really not needles, they're wires. Many of the people that are going to acupuncture today are going to these cookie cutter practitioners, and they're not getting the results that they would if they were scientifically evaluated first. And many of those people are using some pretty, th pretty thick and painful needles, not the very thin gauge wires. Another subspecialty in chiropractic is radiology, occupational chiropractic, uh, pediatrics, uh, geriatrics, gynecology, orthopedic sports injury, and neurology, and some others as well. So they base, now chiropractors are educated to look at the posture, look, that we'd be posture specialists, to look at pediatrics, to do physical and geriatric evaluations, orthopedic evaluations, neurological evaluations, muscle testing. X-ray certainly is a vital component. We, we recommend x-rays to our patients. We want, if you don't see, you can't evaluate. And I, some people say they got x-rays in their hands or they do certain tests to say, oh, this is what's wrong with you. Or they run some heat measuring instrument up your spine and say, oh, look at all the problems you have here. I even had a chiropractor tell, tell um, my barber here not uh, just recently that uh, she'd been in practice all these years, wasn't that many, and she never took an x-ray of anybody. It was just this heat measuring instrument that, and she tried to sell him to come in and at a discount and stuff like that, and he was wise to that game. I mean, it's not illegal for a person to do that, but uh, to me, it isn't the science-based approach that I take. And of course, the people that we see, many of them have been to other chiropractors, maybe got some results, some good, maybe not so good, and they're looking for someone who's more science-based, and that's what our approach is. Does it make us better than the other person? Not necessarily. It's just that we're going to look at that whole person from a science-based perspective, not just one little uh, approach. So, of course, we've used the term uh, wellness. Um, we talked about the biochemical approach a little bit. We're going to talk more about that in this series. Some chiropractors specialize in workers' comp injuries. Others such as we do in our clinic, one large aspect of our practice is auto collision injuries. And if you want to know a lot about that from a medical legal perspective, you should go out on our website. And we have a, a series of programs on whiplash with an attorney, Thomas Benerat, who specializes in auto collision injuries as well as malpractice. So if you suspect that you have had a malpractice incident, um, 
you could always uh, look at those programs and see what he has to say. And then, of course, there's a meridian evaluation, another subspecialty, which is, involves acupuncture. So there are different approaches. Some are called a shotgun approach, uh, little to no science-based pretreatment diagnostic testing. Very little, very, very little. Looking at parts rather than the whole. Lots of hype, lots of lip service, and it's personality driven. See what a great guy I am. Oh boy, I got all these answers and all that and, and this and that, and we don't have to do many tests on you. We'll save you some money and things like that. But uh, actually there's a, a significant research, medical research out there that proved that if you don't see, you can't manage. And what they did is they went to uh, several thousand uh, patients and they said, uh, do you think you've had excellent medical care, so-so um, medical care, poor medical care? And then they would say what they thought they had. And then they said, well, how do you base if you had good medical care? And they said, oh, the doctor listened to me. Well, I should listen to you, but I should do a science test to substantiate, to figure out what is causing those symptoms. And it's just not looking at the spine, just not looking at vitamins and minerals. And there are a lot of wonderful tests out there that are not super duper expensive that can be done. So again, if you don't see, you can't manage. You can't. And we have a lot of people out there, particularly in the natural health care industry, that are not doing many diagnostic tests, or they're doing kind of tests that are out on the periphery. And um, you have to be careful of that. And you have to be careful of these high pressure personality driven or what I call low value practitioners that they actually lower the value of health care by trying to get people in and, and I in my opinion the higher the volume in a, in a clinic generally the lower the quality because if I'm running uh, five six patients an hour I want to tell you um, and using some little instrument to say oh there's a subluxation or something here or some test to say oh you need more calcium I want to tell you I, I, it takes time to think through these things so let's look at posture Big significant aspect of a chiropractic evaluation. Slide you're looking at on the far left is a, a plumb line. We're looking straight through the person. Their, um, this plumb line should be straight. Head should be level. Jaw should be level, not tilted to one side or the other. And the hips should be level. Feet should be relatively straight. In the middle slide, the picture that we're looking at, that plumb line indicates that that spine should be straight. Shoulders level, head level, a scapula. Vertebral borders of scapula level, hips level, and feet straight forward. And then, God in all of his mercy and kindness, and I'm not, I have no uh, reservations in telling you that I believe that Jesus Christ is a great physician, and those people who don't want a chiropractor as a Christian, fine, go to somebody else, because I believe that he is the great physician. I believe that when we welcome into our heart, we become alive with the spirit of Christ Jesus. And then we come into the supernatural dimension of healing. So I want people to have Christ as a great physician, not me. And I would rather have God use me as an instrument rather than me figure out, you know, all those diplomas say I'm God. You know, well, I'm not God, I'm a human being. And, I'm, and it's God who gets the credit as far as I'm concerned. So we're gonna look at that other slide that we had up again, the last picture of that man, he, we have three um, curves in the spine, a slight sway, we're supposed to, a slight sway in the neck, a slight rounding between the shoulders, and as we go down, a slight sway in the lower back. Well, if the neck is too straight or too bent forward, or if they've got a big hump in their lower neck or their mid-back or a big sway in their lower back, we know that there are some issues there that need to be looked at. Now, if we look at the spine more specifically, as the slide we have up there now, is the spine should look straight. We have seven cervical vertebrae, they're in yellow. Neck vertebrae, we have 12 thoracic or dorsal vertebrae, like the dorsal fin of a fish. We have five lumbar vertebrae, two ilium, and then one sacrum. And in the female, three coccygeal segments, and in the male, two. So it definitely tells us that God believes that women are superior to men. Thank you, Hillary Clinton. So praise the Lord, it's true. She's got more bones than we do. And that must mean that God thinks she's got better than us or something. You, you, you struggle with that with your own religion, okay? So the next slide is we're going to look at the human body as three nervous systems. One is the cranial nervous system, and we're going to show you the lobes of the brain. So that would be like sight and touch and taste and smell. We have those nerves of the brain. And then we have these different lobes, as it shows on the screen there, the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, the occipital lobe. And this brain is like an electrical generator at the power plant in your city or outside your city. And it's sending out power, electrical power. And that power is regulated in part by neurotransmitters, by blood, 
and by electrolytes. What are electrolytes and minerals? We're going to talk about them. And the next slide we're going to look at is the base of the brain, which sets, of course, on our neck or near our neck, and that's called the brain stem comes out called the medulla oblongata. So now the next slide. It talks about the somatic organization of our cerebellum. And of course, if a person, as you're looking here, they divide it, the cerebellum in half, and we have one side part of it has our motor activity. That's our motor activity, our function. I'm moving my motor motors right now. And then we have the sensory aspect, a sensory activity. I can touch things. And that's affected by the brain as well as my peripheral nervous system. And so then we're going to look at that peripheral nervous system. Now, for example, let's bring that slide back up again. If a person, for example, had a stroke or some type of cerebrovascular accident, a CVA, on, say, their left side of the brain, they're, if they're going to have any paralysis, it's going to be on the right side. Well, if they've had a, a stroke on the right side of the brain, if they're going to have paralysis, it's going to be on the right side. So those nerves in the brain, when they come down the brain stem, they decusate, they cross. That's why the nerves from this side end up affecting this side, and the nerves from this side end up affecting the opposite side. And so when the chiropractor goes in there, and he or she's got some beautiful x-rays of your spine, and he sees a subluxation or alignment or a curvature or something wrong in your neck, and they gently attempt to move those vertebrae back in, then they're taking the pressure off of the brain stem here and the nerves that affect the brain. So why wouldn't I then begin to think better? Why wouldn't my Alzheimer's or my dementia or my Parkinsonism de decrease? We have all kinds of shows on Parkinsonism and Parkinsonism and Alzheimer's that sh show the effectiveness and where those diseases come from. And they can be treated naturally. You don't have to take drugs to treat those things. I mean, uh, many of those people can get along totally without drugs, and they live a long, a long and healthy life, and they don't happen in nursing homes. They don't end up, you know, stones. So it can happen. It really can. But the problem is, in our society, it's so drug-oriented. I mean, you turn on that TV, and you're going to see an average of 30 drug ads a day. If you went to Europe, you don't see any markup in drugs. But you got the lobbyists affecting the federal and state governments here so they can keep charging so excessively for these drugs. And certainly there's research and things like that. But my God, I mean, I had a woman tell me that uh, her, her, she has rheumatoid arthritis. She came and she'd be taking these drugs all these years. And now her health plan said, no, we're not going to pay for those drugs anymore. Now those drugs are costing $4,000 a month for that rheumatoid arthritis. They aren't going to pay for those anymore. So now she's stuck. And so she saw us on television and said, you know something? And she called a couple other chiropractors, was evaluating them, went out in the Minnesota Board of Chiropractic Examiners and website, went out and checked me on, on Google and stuff like that and said, you know, even though I don't like Christians, she doesn't like Christians. She thinks she's an atheist. Well, an atheist isn't, isn't really an atheist because they believe, they don't believe that God exists. Therefore, they believe there is a God. And I love atheists. There's no problem with that. So I, I don't have a problem with atheists. You know, everybody's got a choice. It's America. You have freedom of choice. And so I believe that. And so $4,000 a month. And, the, and she was getting sicker. Her liver was starting to malfunction. She was end up with diabetes. She already was having heart problems from the medications. And $4,000 a month. My God, how long are you going to do that? They're bankrupting our health industry through these drugs. All right, enough of that evangelizing and preaching. We're going to go to the peripheral nervous system now that we talked about briefly. So we're seeing all of the nerves, those yellow lines that you're going to see there represent the nerves coming out of your brain and down into your cervical spine. And then there's a large plexus of nerves in your lower neck and upper back called the brachial plexus. The nerves come out and go out between your ribs. And then in your lower back, the nerves come out that's called the lumbosacral plexus or sacral plexus. And they're trying to show you that now, but I'm going so fast that they can hardly stay with me. And those nerves then go down and supply all of the nerve and blood supply down right to the tips of your toes. So when there's a vertebra out of place, a subluxation in the spine or a spinal curvature, it's adversely affecting, it's decreasing the amount of proper nerve supply going out from the spine, from the brain, out to your organs, as the next slide is going to show you. So we have nerves that come out from the spine. They go from the spine down into the organ. The organ interprets what's going, or those nerves interpret what's going on in those organs. They send those images back up to the spine, and the spine interprets it, and then the, the brain interprets it, and the brain says, do this or that. Well, when the chiropractor says, it's called a safety pin cycle. It involves what we call the afferent and efferent nerves. And so I'm not going to get into all the technicality in this program. But the effect is that when there's something out of alignment in the spine, 
It can affect your heart, as you see in the slide, and your breathing, and your stomach, and your digestion, and your liver, and your kidneys, all of your organs, your reproductive organs. So when you go to the chiropractor and they do a thorough examination, thoroughness, thoroughness, not the slipshod stuff that goes on, they do a thorough examination, make thorough x-rays of you, and, and maybe do some blood tests before they go and say, oh, take this vitamin, take this mineral, or take this homeopathic remedy, take this essential oil. And they do a thorough examination, and they bio-identify you, like that you could go out and have your DNA identified. What is your DNA nature? Well, you can identify the physiological functions of your systems through blood tests. Simple enough. They're all medical tests. It can be interpreted from a nutritional perspective. So that's the autonomic nervous system, and it functions well until you start to get high blood pressure. All of a sudden, those nerves and arteries going from your lower neck, your upper back, out to your heart, they're not giving the heart the blood supply it needs. So the heart starts to have arrhythmia. It starts to miss beat and skips beats. So what does medicine say? Let's put a pacemaker in there. Fine, because that may be needed. But does medicine go and check, or does the chiropractor go and check to see what your calcium and your phosphorus and your magnesium, potassium levels are? No, not typically, but oh, here, take this vitamin. Or they say, here, take this drug. Well, there can be evidence out there that that vitamin or that mineral or that drug may lower the blood pressure. But again, you're treating the symptoms, not the cause. If I'm giving you calcium based on symptoms, I am no different than a medical doctor giving you penicillin without checking your white blood cell count or giving you erythromycin or streptomycin. Would you go to a medical doctor that you say I have a sore throat, they don't look at your throat, or maybe they look at it, but they don't do a, a CBC, a red and white blood cell count, a hemoglobin count? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. You know that. I know that. Well, it's no different than if you come to me and you say, well, I got the pain in my joints. Uh, doctor said I have fibromyalgia. You know, I got some arthritis. And I say, oh, I've got this specialized calcium for you. Oh, it's good. And I give you some literature from a vitamin company that says, oh, this is good. And, and then I got some testimonies of people on that. Well, that's fine and dandy. But do you really need that calcium? I'm asking you right now. The vitamins and minerals and homeopathic remedies that you're taking, that the chiropractor has prescribed for you, medical doctor has, nutritionist has prescribed for you, do you really need them? How do you know that you really need them? If I'm to base my things on symptoms, that doesn't make sense because symptoms are subjective. How do I know that those symptoms are really related to a calcium deficiency? So now we're going to look at dermatomes a slide of dermatones, so the body is mapped out. So we can see these different colors, and if you could see real close on them, we would see C2, C6, C7, T5, L3. Well, those are identifying those nerves coming out from the spine. Those are called dermatones, they're like little map areas. So if you tell me I have some numbness or tingling and pain in a certain area, that tells me what nerve probably is involved. Now, do I go and treat that area in your calf because you, you have you know, stiff legs or something like that, or restless leg syndrome? No, I go back to where I know those nerves come out. And I examine that area, and then I x-ray that area to see what's going on inside of there, because if you don't see, you cannot manage. If you are blind, you cannot adequately manage. You can't do it. And you need to get to natural health care physicians, because that's the league I'm in, who are going to be thorough with you. It's no different than why do people go to Mayo Clinic? Is it because Mayo Clinic is better than the other places? No, Mayo Clinic will deny that. What Mayo Clinic will tell you is that they are more thorough than most other medical clinics. And the same thing holds in dentistry and the same thing holds in chiropractic. Some people are not as thorough as others. And the more thorough the practitioner is, the higher the likelihood of finding the cause or causes and also finding the appropriate treatment. So the next slide we're going to look at her gives us an illustration of spinal subluxation. So we're looking at an illustration now. You have a side view of the spine. So A shows us a disc. B, the line going back to B, shows us one of those holes or intervertebral foramina that where the nerves, arteries, veins, lymphatics, and acupuncture meridians pack, pass out of the spine. And then below that is another blue. There's a normal disc there. And then C, we see the nerve coming out of the intervertebral foramina. And as I said, not just nerves come out of there, but arteries, veins, lymphatics, and acupuncture meridians. And so if there's pressure, if a vertebra is out of place, a subluxation, as it says on your screen, or if you're listening to us on, on tape, 
or a CD. It's an incomplete dislocation. So it's not a dislocation, it's a partial dislocation of our bone or joint. So that goes on in the spine. They have never found a spine that didn't have a subluxation in it. So to try and create a spine, a subluxation of the spine is crazy. All right, and then we see that vertebra D, it slipped backwards. See, it's subluxated posterior backwards. And what is it doing? It's putting pressure on that disc. It's wedging the disc. It's making that disc shrink. It's cutting down the blood supply in that disc. It's cutting down its functionality. And then at the back, we see that red area, which is illustration of a nerve, but just not nerves, but arteries, veins, and lymphatics, and acupuncture meridians. So if you have a, a hose and all of the water is passing through it, guess what? You have 100% of water coming out of the house. There's 100% of the water flowing through the hose, right? If I park my car on top of that hose, um, some of the water will still get through there, maybe 50% of it. So I have then lack of proper, of full functionality there. And so when you get a good science-based chiropractic adjustment, then the, the likelihood of you having restored natural flow of blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatic supply, acupuncture, meridian, energy flowing through your yin and your yang flowing through there is going to be much higher. Some people also have hypermobility of vertebrae. Their vertebrae and muscles are so loose that they don't hold the vertebrae in alignment. Some people have hypomobility. The vertebrae stay locked and tight. And so as a chiropractic physician, I'm either treating those hypermobile vertebrae that don't stay in, so people come in more often, or some of those people that they stay so tight that you have to see them, so it takes a different approach. Well, if I don't have an x-ray of those vertebrae, if I don't have a good orthopedic and neurological workup, if I haven't tested out those muscles, I'm not gonna know what's going on there, but I'll see get in the table, clack, clack, clack. That's not a science approach. Now let's look at a couple of vertebrae here. This is a good example of two vertebrae that are in alignment. And looking at them from the side at the front are called the bodies of the vertebra, and in between the tube are the discs. And when we look at the back, we see there, up at, uh, up at the top, we see an example of the spinal cord passing down behind the vertebra. And then right there where that is, we see a nerve passing out of that intervertebral foramen. And at the back of the vertebra, we see two bones sticking out there. Those are called spinous processes. And I totally believe that God didn't have to put them there, but he put them there for the attachment of muscles and ligaments and tendons, and also for chiropractors to use as levers to realign those vertebrae, to correct them. Now the next slide that we're gonna look at is looking at vertebra from the top. Then we're going to look at two vertebrae. They're going to show you vertebrae that are in alignment, and then you're going to show what they are like when they're out of alignment. So the truth of it is, the Bible tells us that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, I say, dwells within me. I hope he dwells within you. I hope you don't turn off the program before you accept Jesus and recommit your life to him. Let the great physician come alive in you and heal you. He's healing you and restoring you to health and well-being. He really is. And if you'll continue to focus, feed yourself the bread of life, participate in the covenant blood of the Lamb that was shed for you, that washed away all of your sins. Walk and seek after the righteousness. Seek after the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of the kingdom of God, all of the promised land blessings will be with you here on earth as well as for eternity. 